Why, oh why, did NBC remove this story from their website? New details about the moments police arrived. Sources familiar with what unfolded in the Pelosi residence now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. The 82 year old did not immediately declare an emergency or try to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant and away from police. It's unclear if the 82-year-old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and said everything's good. But instantaneously, a struggle ensued as police clearly saw David DePath strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer. After tackling the suspect, officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi, who was lying in a pool of blood. Law enforcement officials tell us the bottom line here is this was a terrifying situation. We still don't know exactly what unfolded between Mr. Pelosi and the suspect for the 30 minutes they were alone inside that house before police arrived. Officials who were investigating this matter would not go into further details about these new details. Now, the man who answered the door was Pelosi. And instead of running out going, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm being attacked with a hammer. He went back inside. By the way, did they refer to Pelosi as defendant and the other guy as suspect? Awfully weird. Now, NBC said it did not meet their journalistic standards. Given the fact that Sharpton has a show on MSNBC, Hall, one has to ask, what journalistic standards? But resist, we much, we must. And NBC has now suspended the reporter. It's been a tough week for personalities over at NBC. Tiffany, I hate Whitey Cross got the ax. Florida lo literally looks like the d of the country, so let's get rid of Florida. Um, Ron, yeah. are you saying castrate Florida of the country? Seriously, let's castrate Florida. And let's just castrate Florida. It's the blank of the country. Now, we still have questions about the Paul Pelosi story. They still haven't released the video of the Pelosi home, supposedly under 24 7 surveillance cameras. Now, to recap, Remember, just days before the midterm elections, a hammer-wielding, mentally ill man who was in the country illegally broke into the home of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and attacked her husband, Paul. Mr. Pelosi suffered a fractured skull, underwent surgery, and is back home expected to make a complete recovery. That's good news. At the time of the attack, Speaker Pelosi was in Washington, D.C. The media claimed the attacker believed in right-wing conspiracy and, in a blog, criticized left wing politics. But the New York Post wrote, the attacker lived with a notorious local nudist in a Berkeley home, complete with a Black Lives Matter sign in the window and an LGBTQIA whatever rainbow flag emblazoned with a marijuana symbol hanging from a tree. So there's a lot we still don't know about the attacker now in custody. Authorities still have not publicly offered a motive. What's this? Larry has in his baby brown libertarian hands, a couple of baby brown libertarian my pillow, my slippers? Oh, yes, he does. And you know what else? Here's the good news. Lean forward. As Joe Biden likes to say, they come in different styles and in different colors. So if you don't like this style, there's another style. And just so you don't get bored, today we have something new. A brand new six-piece set of my pillow, my towels. A towel, hand towel, and face cloth right here in this snug little package. Again, they come in different colors. Mine, of course, white, because after all, I'm the black face of white supremacy. What other color would the great Ogurski have? And then finally, there is this, the Giza Dream bed sheet, which I'm holding high enough so you can see it. I get complaints, Larry. I'm watching you on the tube, and I can't see the Giza Dream bed sheet that you're holding up. I want to order it, but now I can't. Oh, yes, you can. Just call the number on your screen or go to MyPillow.com promo code ELDER. The number on your screen or MyPillow.com promo code ELDER. For those of you who are a little hard of hearing, the number on your screen or go to MyPillow.com promo code ELDER. I'll be right back. Now, the media and the Democrats immediately connected the attack to the alleged hateful political rhetoric 
of MAGA Republicans, the leader of whom is, of course, you know who, the reviled by the left, former President Donald Trump. An op-ed in the left-wing Washington Post, I guess that's redundant, said Pelosi, whom Republicans have long demonized as the face of progressive policies and who was a target of the rioters during the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol, emerged as the top member of Congress maligned in political ads, with Republicans spending nearly $40 million on ads that mention Pelosi in the final stretch of the campaign, according to Ad Impact. Now, that $40 million, by the way, matches the amount spent by one guy, Sam Bankman Fried, Freed, the fraudster who owned the cryptocurrency firm that went belly up. But let's get back to Pelosi. Trump, who shockingly has announced his intention to run for president, as if anybody had been surprised, promptly condemned the attack at the time, stating, with Paul Pelosi, that's a terrible thing. With all of them, it's a terrible thing. Look what's happened, Trump said, to San Francisco generally. Look what's happening in Chicago. It's far worse than Afghanistan, end of quote. And the chairwoman of the RNC said, this is a deranged individual. You can't have people saying, let's fire Pelosi or let's take back the House. It's saying, go and do violence. That's just unfair. But none of this for the Democratic Party was sufficient. None of the expressions of concern were sufficient. Their argument goes that by making Pelosi the face of the Democratic Party, the mean old Republicans encourage violence against her and her family. Sigh. And that narrative might very well have been a factor in why the Democrats did so well on the midterms on Tuesday. A lot of Democrats and independents felt the way Republicans and conservatives reacted to the attack demonstrated the Trumplification of the Republican Party. Most of the insensitive comments were made after Pelosi reportedly was going to make a complete recovery, but that didn't matter. And police. If a mentally ill intruder broke into Mar-a-Lago and struck Trump in the head with a hammer, not only would the Trump deranged left barely contain their glee, They deem it retribution, why the SOB got what he deserved, as they felt when Trump contracted COVID-19. Remember that? Tonight, FLOTUS and I, First Lady of the United States, and I tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. And it wasn't just the executive branch that got hit. There were more positive results at the White House today. On Capitol Hill, Senator Mike Lee of Utah tested positive. There he is um, giving out hugs on the White House lawn Saturday. Mike Lee is what they call a stupor spreader. Of course, the President and the First Lady both tested positive for COVID-19, then all weekend long, people were confused about what was going on with Donald Trump. So in that sense, yes, it was like a normal weekend. Well, say what you will about 2020, but uh, it's got moves. And it's been very weird to see all these people who clearly hate Trump come out and say, we wish him well. I think a lot of them are just guilty that their first wish came true. Look, I don't want the president to die, obviously. You know, actually, I wish him a very lengthy recovery. President and active bioweapon Donald Trump. <laughs> president Trump claimed to have survived the coronavirus. Yay. I'm not going to say I'm disappointed, but it kind of feels like when there's a car crash and the only survivor is the drunk driver. Trump said him getting COVID was, quote, a blessing from God. And I bet even God was like, hey, we tried, guys. <laughs> Actually, maybe we should be more optimistic about this. I mean, there's, there's two ways we can look at it. Either Trump's telling the truth and we finally have a cure for COVID, or Trump is lying and he's still going to die. <laughs> I'm not going to say that's a win-win, but it's definitely not a lose-lose. He is technically deemed uh, obese in terms of his weight. He weighs 244 pounds, which means that he is clinically obese. Which does make him obese. He is uh, obese. He is obese. 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 He is obese. What is happening? Trump even turned a hospital stay into chaos. The Joker caused less trouble when he visited Gotham General. <laughs> oh, such empathy. Then they recruit the thug for Congress. Where was the media and their fellow Democrats when longtime Representative Maxine Waters said this about Trump cabinet members? And if you see anybody 
from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station. You get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And where, oh, where was the media and their fellow Democrats when, during the Trump administration, then Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer stood outside of the Supreme Court building and, referring to Trump's court nominees, Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch, said... I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. And why didn't the media and the Dems connect the dots to hateful rhetoric when during former President Barack Obama's second term, two New York cops, three Baton Rouge cops, and five Dallas cops were killed execution style by three different black men, all motivated by the lie of anti-black police systemic racism. Where were they? Now, is there a connection to the deaths of these officers and Obama's rhetoric on cops and race? The Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly. And remember this one? That's still part of our DNA. That's, that's passed on. Uh, it, we're not cured of it. Racism. We are not cured of. From embracing the anti-cop group Black Lives Matter, an organization that promotes the lie of anti-black systemic racism, to welcoming the race-hustling Reverend Al Sharpton to the White House over 80-some times, to pushing the hands up, don't shoot Ferguson lie in a speech before the UN. At times, we too have failed to live up to our ideals. That America has plenty of problems within its own borders. This is true. In a summer marked by instability in the Middle East and Eastern Europe, I know the world also took notice of the small American city of Ferguson, Missouri, where a young man was killed and a community was divided. So yes, we have our own racial and ethnic tensions. And like every country, we continually wrestle with how to reconcile the vast changes wrought by globalization and greater diversity with the traditions that we hold dear. And then there's this one. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. Never quite understood what that even meant. Now, is there blood on Obama's hands about the attack on Paul Pelosi? Obama condemned politicians who, as he put it, stir up division to make folks as angry and as afraid of one another for their own advantage, end of quote. Yet Obama was strangely silent when his ex-Veep, now President Joe Biden, said this about Trump backers. What do you mean by semi-fascism, sir? In December, you will... You know what I mean. None dare call this yet another classic case of left-wing hypocrisy, double standards, and selective outrage. And that's the elder statement. I'll be right back. Now be sure to hit that like button because I know you like the show. Hit subscribe because I know you want to. And also click on the description below so that you get on our mailing list because believe it or not, we have been demonetized by YouTube. I guess it was something we said. Maybe about the election, maybe about COVID. I have no idea. Maybe I should blame it on systemic racism. Either way, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of our videos, you got to get on our mailing list. Now, as I said, we've been demonetized, so you might want to throw a little something in the tip jar. Donate to the show to make sure you still get this rock and roll, hard-knuckled show every single day. And remember, the first half hour, gratis. We give it away. That's how we roll. Second half hour, you got to be a subscriber. Go to LarryWithEpic.com. That's LarryWithEpic.com.